Yo! In this video, I'm going to show you the best NVIDIA control- I mean, today I'm going to help you fix all of your black screen problems in OBS. I'll be going over what you can do to fix it on a desktop and a laptop so no one's left out. Well, maybe Mac users. Who cares about Macs? Am I right? I mean, I guess the settings would work on a Mac, but Mac users probably won't watch this anyway now after that comment. Oh well, who cares what they think? They buy garbage! So anyway, I'll show you how to properly set up and troubleshoot problems with game capture, Windows capture, and display capture while showing the differences between them, when you should be using them, and why. I'll also be giving you some extremely useful recording tips here and there for when you fix your black screen in OBS. Alright, let's get started today, like a somebody. So the first part of this tutorial covers how to fix the black screen in OBS, and it's specifically for people on multi-GPU setups. This is because I believe these people will have the most problems. Because if you have more than one GPU, your black screen problem is probably because OBS is running on a different GPU to what you're trying to record. Like for example, example, laptops nowadays come with two GPUs, the integrated GPU, which handles non-3D applications like the running of your desktop, and your dedicated GPU, which handles all 3D applications and games. OBS and the game need to use the same GPU for OBS to be able to pick it up through game capture. So to fix this problem, make sure OBS is closed, click the start button, and write in graphic settings. And then click here! So come here to the drop down menu and choose desktop app, then click browse. If you installed OBS to its default location, which is here, select OBS 64.exe and add it. Then click options. Since I only have one GPU on my desktop PC, it's telling me that OBS will only ever use my RTX 2070. If you're on a laptop, your integrated GPU will show up under power saving and your dedicated GPU will show under high performance. Choose high performance to get OBS to run on your dedicated GPU and then click save. With some tweaking in OBS that I'll show you how to do in a bit, you'll be able to run display capture, game capture and window capture completely fine if you selected your dedicated GPU here. Also, so while we're here in this section, there are actually some games that automatically run through your iGPU, not your dedicated GPU, and that's why they're not being picked up by game capture in OBS. So when you encounter one of those games, this is the area to add them to ensure they'll always be running through your dedicated GPU. Minecraft is one of those games people have the most problems with adding here because there are just so many different versions and launches people use. So I'll leave a link in the description which will show you what you need to add here to get it working through game capture. By the way, before we leave this section, it's important for you to ensure your game and OBS are running on the same GPU if you're on a multi-GPU setup because if they're not, you're likely to run into performance problems in OBS. Worst case scenario according to OBS themselves is if you try to capture a game through OBS that's running on a different GPU, this could cause the game to crash. Alright, so let's get out of here. Oh my god, the police! Whenever I record, they're always after me, man. So once you've done all of that, and before you open OBS again, we're going to make it so OBS will run as administrator automatically every time we run it. Some people out there will be like, mm, I don't like giving OBS administration permissions. But doing so is easily one of the best things you can do for it. According to their official Discord, certain games or applications will require OBS Studio to be run with elevated privileges in order to be captured. Running as administrator may also improve OBS performance performance when gaming. The more technical explanation can be found in their wiki where they basically say that running OBS as an administrator tells Windows to allocate more GPU resources to OBS. So if you're encountering GPU overload issues in OBS, running OBS as an administrator will help OBS work more effectively and hopefully resolve any GPU overload issues you experience. So here's how you make it run as administrator automatically every time. You can either right click your OBS shortcut or wherever your exe icon is and select properties, go to the compatibility tab and choose run this program as an administrator, click apply, done. I'm hoping to god that this section is actually in the same place on Windows 11. Any Windows 11 users out there, thank you for being an unpaid Microsoft beta tester, so everything will be perfect for when I finally decide to use it. So now open OBS, you'll see this screen, click yes. We're going to start by getting display capture to work properly first, and then the rest. So either click the plus button here, or right click, hover over add, and then select display capture. Name it whatever you want and press ok. If you have any other video sources here, make sure display capture is up the top just so that nothing else is blocking it from being seen. So in the property screen, if you have two monitors, you can click in the display section and choose that monitor. Oh my god, they're coming back, man! So if it's capturing, like what you can see here, oh my god, that's weird. That means that automatic is fine to use. If you're on a multi-GPU setup and leaving it on automatic results in it not capturing your screen, in the drop-down box next to capture method, select Windows 10, 1903 and up, and that should fix it. If this actually doesn't fix your black screen, it's likely something's interfering with OBS, and I'll show you a bunch of ways you can troubleshoot this after I help people having trouble with game capture. But just in case this did fix your black screen problem and you're ready to start recording, here's a top-tier OBS 
OBS tip from my good friend Gouncy. He recently struggled with random stuttering in his recordings and they'd also happen whenever he'd stream on Twitch. He found that if you save recordings on the same drive you're playing your installed games from, that this is what causes the stuttering. You might be thinking, oh it's fine, I only have SSDs and they can handle the workload. I'm a rich boy, ha ha ha. Gouncy only has SSDs too and it still happened. So if you're noticing any stuttering in your gameplay footage, tell OBS to save your recordings on a different drive to where your games are installed, then give my dude a follow if this fixed your stuttering. This happened to Gonsi for months and on two different PC builds. Now that he's fixed it, he's even able to stream and record at the same time with no stuttering in his live streams or gameplay footage. Alright, so let's add a game capture source. Name it whatever you want. What I would recommend is hiding every source that you have underneath because even though game capture is at the top, nothing is being captured right now through game capture. But if you have active sources underneath and it's showing in the preview, you'll think game capture is doing it when in fact it's actually not capturing anything. So hide every source underneath and now we're gonna get game capture to work. Something I touched on earlier was some games have issues preventing them from being captured using game capture but it's rare to come across them. You might be thinking, well why wouldn't I use display capture then if it captures everything? I'm the smarty pants. You should only ever consider recording a game using display capture as a last resort. This is because game recordings are much smoother if you choose game capture instead of display capture. Here's an extreme example where I set my graphics pretty high in Resident Evil Village. While recording I was using display capture and whenever I'd enter this house and it was only this house for some reason, my game played and looked exactly like what you see here. If you have a console you probably experience this frame rate all the time, especially if you have a PlayStation 5, but when you see me enter this house using game capture, you see that the recording turned out much better than what happened when I recorded using display capture. By the way, when recordings are stuttering like what you can see here, the best way to solve this is to simply turn down your graphics settings in the game itself. Here my GPU was overloaded because I set the graphics too high in the game. When I lowered my settings, this no longer happened. So the difference between this and Gonzi's problem is his stuttering occurred regardless of whether he was playing a game on its highest or lowest settings. With game capture, you can set it up so it captures any full screen application. So when you load your game, game capture will automatically pick it up after a few seconds. Or you can set it up to capture a specific window. I personally only ever choose capture specific window because if you can get your game to show up in the drop down menu here, that's how you'll know 100% OBS can detect and record your game. Capture specific window is especially useful on a one screen setup because when you alt tab out of your game to check OBS, sometimes you'll just see a black screen. When this happens, it's usually because the game is minimized, which causes OBS to stop rendering it. So a lot of people would just see the black screen and automatically think it wasn't recording the game, when in fact it would have if OBS was able to detect it. Which is why capture specific window is much better than capture any full screen application because you don't actually know if it was recording or not. So to get capture specific window to work first, you need to load your game. We're gonna try capturing Elden Ring. Make sure it's at least in the menu and past any loading screen before you try capturing it. Otherwise, OBS may not detect it. If you see that the game hasn't been detected here, press cancel and then double click game capture again and then capture specific window and then you should be able to see your game here. And then after selecting it, in a few seconds you'll see the preview. If you've done all of this and it's still not picking up your game, try going back to the game and changing the game display mode to something else. So for example, if you're currently using full screen exclusive, try changing it to borderless windowed instead or vice versa. I personally found this helps me in OBS if it has trouble detecting the game. Then go back to OBS after waiting a few seconds and then see if your game is showing up here. Sometimes when you alt tab from the game to OBS, it does show a black screen, but if it can see the window, that's how you know with 100% certainty that OBS can see your game. When you go back to the game, it will continue capturing and recording it. You should always do a test recording first to check if everything is set up and working fine. You don't want to find out after a 30 minute recording session you actually were recording a black screen the entire time. It takes literally seconds to check this, so don't be the very lazy one to do. By the way, before we move on, I haven't experienced this myself, but I've heard it can happen. Sometimes the game capture source size can become stuck, and when it does, you'll see a red dot in the upper left corner. So I'm going to replicate it now by shrinking this. If you have no other active video sources underneath, then it will just look like a black screen. When this happens, the easiest way to resize it is by right clicking on the source it's happening to, select the transform menu, and then click reset transform. Once you do this, your game capture source will fill the entire preview screen. Keep in mind, if game capture can't see your game, there are just some games that you just won't be able to capture using game capture. Here's a small list featuring the most common games people are having problems with along with how to solve them. Also, if you're trying to capture old games or record anything running through an emulator, if game capture doesn't detect it, see if window capture can. Window capture will capture anything played in windowed or borderless full screen. So add window capture, right click here, hover over add, and then window capture. Also, if window capture is showing a black screen and you're on a multi-GPU setup, come down here and change it from automatic to Windows 10. And then it should work fine. According 
According to OBS's wiki, some software such as overlays, FPS counters, or antivirus programs can cause issues with OBS which result in source capture hooking conflicts or OBS just generally crashing. If you have Reva Tuner and MSI Afterburner running in the background, this software seems to cause the most conflicts and you can fix these issues by ticking the Use Microsoft Detours API hooking found on the RTSS setup screen. Here's a list of other software that can cause OBS to behave strangely. I recommend pausing this screen and just skimming through everything just to check which software conflicts with OBS because if you have any of the software listed here, it shows how you can fix any issues OBS may have as a result of using them. Keep in mind that if you're having too much trouble getting the game to run through game capture or window capture, that you can always use display capture as a last resort. If you've been using OBS for a while now and you've only just started getting a black screen, it could be a plugin that you've installed for OBS. Recently, I had to uninstall the Stream Elements plugin, SE Live, because it was just giving me so many problems. It's just not compatible with OBS anymore, so much that OBS themselves want nothing to do with it. But if you have a lot of plugins, when any of them get updated and depending on what they do, they can actually interfere with OBS. The easiest way to see if a plugin is affecting OBS is to go to the download section on the OBS homepage and click download zip. A portable edition of OBS is extremely useful to have. I always use mine to troubleshoot problems, like for example, if something isn't working properly in my main OBS. So if your portable edition of OBS works perfectly, you'll know that it's something that you've done because it's a clean install of OBS. So once the zip is downloaded, create a folder anywhere that isn't in your main OBS folder, call it OBS clean or whatever you want, then unzip the files into the folder. There is one extra step that we have to do, and that is we have to right click here, hover over new, and then click on text document. And then what you have to do is simply name this OBS underscore portable underscore mode. And that's all you have to do to create a portable edition of OBS. So after you've done that, click bin 64 bit, and then come down here, open OBS, and you'll see it functions like a clean install of OBS, which won't use any of your settings or plugins that you have in your main OBS. Add the capture source that you are having problems with and see if you experience them here. So yeah, hopefully this fixed all of your problems. So now you can record all the Minecraft and Fortnite you want. And Warzone. Wow. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll probably make another OBS video in the future, but this one will focus on OBS and coder settings because I know a lot of people get these wrong. It's not their fault. There's just so much misinformation out there on YouTube. Okay guys, have a good one today.